Calcified arteries are a major component of cardiovascular disease and high blood pressure. As calcium starts to develop on the inner lining of the artery called the lumen, it starts to calcify and make the arteries stiffer, harder, and thus that's how it increases blood pressure. I'll tell you where the calcium is supposed to be. It's supposed to be in our bones. Good thing I kept this thing for demonstration purposes. The patient was never happy anyway. The nutrient necessary to transport the calcium from the arteries into the bones is vitamin K2. Vitamin K2 is naturally found in green leafy vegetables, egg yolks, chicken breast, red meat, cheese and butter, and fermented foods like sauerkraut and natto. Blah. Fortunately, you can take supplements, thank God, with vitamin K2. So the general guideline is to take between 90 and 180 micrograms per day. That's gonna be the correct dosage to get the calcium out of your arteries and into the bones. Now that's really what you need to know, but there is a side note that is very important and you're gonna to wanna to learn about this because you don't wanna be taking these things improperly. The first benefit of K2 is that it might be beneficial for higher blood pressure. The problem is, is that there's research studies that show that it is not effective at changing your blood pressure, but yet there's other, other studies that say it is. And the reason why these studies are conflicting is because there's so many variables when it comes to high blood pressure. If you want to naturally lower your blood pressure, then just wait till the end. I'll give you uh, some guidelines of how to do that, but that's for the end. Right now, just know that vitamin K2 might help your blood pressure, but it's not that one secret uh, supplement that's gonna radically change everyone. The second little extra finding is that vitamin K2 plays a major role in osteoporosis. That little old lady that's taking uh, 1,200 to 1,500 milligrams of calcium every day, hoping that it becomes uh, into the bones, that it, may, it helps her osteoporosis. And then after a year or two of taking all this calcium, they find that it hasn't changed her osteoporosis at all. It just, to, that, to, a, to the patient, it just makes no sense. How can I take all this calcium and it doesn't affect my osteoporosis? But now here's the bummer of it. They do a calcium score and they find that now she has calcified arteries. And that's because when you increase your calcium, but that calcium is not able to enter the bones, if you're not taking vitamin K2, then you're actually causing yourself more harm. And there's plenty of research to support this. Now, where does this not really happen? It doesn't happen in Japan as often. In Japan, they actually have much less osteoporosis. And the theory is because a traditional Japanese diet tends to have more vitamin K2 because of their natural food that they eat, which is called natto, which is a fermented soybean. Just simply one cup of natto gives you 40 micrograms of vitamin K2. These women have better bone density at an elderly age. They have less heart disease. It makes sense. So just for fun, I tried to find out how much vitamin K2 is in a Big Mac. So I Googled it and I couldn't find it. So I got on the phone with a representative of McDonald's and I wanted to ask, hey, how much is in this, uh, in this meal? Hi, yeah, I was just trying to find out. I am curious, I'm doing some research. I wanted to know how much vitamin K2 is in a Big Mac. A Big Mac is part of a well-balanced diet. I don't think I'm gonna get anywhere with this. Because of this, I myself am gonna take a vitamin K2 supplement. I'll put a link down below in the description of the one that I take. You can take whichever one that you want, but if you wanna know what I'm doing, I think I'm gonna do that and also eat foods that are high in vitamin K. Also, I'm gonna exercise a lot. I would suggest you do the same.